let us see first of all what all you need to have on your trolley for doing the procedure of catheterization you need a ball of betadine and a sponge holder to clean the part you need a tube containing jalukan jelly full tube which has been pre-sterilized you can also have some jalukan jelly filled in syringe and to this syringe is a metallic adapter which is used to inject the jelly in the urethra of the patient then they sh you should have an optimum size of catheter poly catheter this catheter is contained uh, within this poly pack this is pre sterilized you need a bag to collect the urine the uro bag once you have put in the catheter you need to inflate the balloon for inflating the balloon you have to keep a syringe filled with distilled water 10 ml ready remember balloon should always be inflated with distilled water not with normal saline or with plain water or any other liquid that you may have in the operation theater suit you should also keep ready a kidney tray this is to collect the urine that will come out of the catheter sometimes this urine is uh, not clean it will look dirty colored or you may like to take a sample for urine culture in that case also keep a disposable syringe ready to collect the urine sample for culture and sensitivity so that's what you should have on the catheterizing trolley okay as a first step of this procedure you must always record the informed consent on the patient and you must always explain the entire procedure to the patient what you're going to do to him and what may happen to him after he is catheterized so this part of procedure is very very vital the patient should be made to lie supine on the table the thighs should be slightly abducted and genitalia should be properly exposed as a next step should be to clean the part first clean the suprapubic area with iodine scrub solution uh, some patients have who associated groin infection fungal or some kind so you apply thoroughly this iodine solution scrub it the scrub time is about 2 to 3 minutes because that is the time the iodine will take, take to act upon you are firstly scrubbing the area around the genitalia After thoroughly scrubbing the area, let this thing be there for about 2-3 minutes. Take another pad soaked with iodine scrub solution to clean the genitalia now, scrub the genitalia part now. And some patients have the prepuce in front and uh, they may not have attended to their prepucial hygiene particularly old people so you need to retract it back and apply the scrub solution here and clean the prepucial sac very very thoroughly often there are plenty of microbes in this prepucial sac so before you catheterize anybody it is mandatory to clean this part very well so we are first using a scrub solution to clean this part after it has been there for about 2 minutes you mop this scrub solution of the area next you should take iodine solution and a sponge holder with that apply this solution all over the genitalia very very thoroughly yeah. 
the entire area that you clean now should be applied with iodine solution this solution should also be left in there for about 2 minutes 2 to 3 minutes Clean again the prebucial sac, perineatal area with betadine. Next, you should have the patient draped with sterile drippings. The phallus and the scrotum should be brought out of the hole. The prepuce should be retracted back fully, take a cord piece and wrap it around at the coronal groove. This will serve to retain the prepuce in a backward position. The penis should be capped straight vertically up and jelly, now you need to inject jalucan jelly for topical anesthesia. This is the nozzle of the jalucan jelly. Keep the penis vertically up and bring the jalucan jelly nozzle on top. First you drop couple of drops on the meatus. Let the nozzle of the jelly tube sink in into the meatus by its own weight. You should hold the penis at the coronal glue side to side. Don't try to hold the penis like this. 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock. If you hold like this, it tends to slip. If you hold side to side, the grip is more strong. So pull the penis upwards towards the ceiling. Now you jelly, you need to inject this jelly. Don't squeeze the jelly like this whole thing in a go. Instill jelly by squeezing the tube from the back. Slowly, slowly. Tell the patient what you're doing. When you instill this jelly slowly, slowly, Urethra is not suddenly distended, right? If you just squeeze the whole tube, it will suddenly distend the urethra, patient may have discomfort and this may induce some bleeding from urethra. So we, see, we feel that it is much better to instill jelly slowly, slowly like this. While you are squeezing this jelly tube, the digital pressure keeps the urethra uploaded and there should be some pressure exerted by the nozzle into the meatus. Instill full jelly tube into the meatus. Now when you withdraw, when you instill this jelly, you take it out and keep this occluded. You should see the jelly remains inside. There is another way of injecting jalucan jelly which is often done in theatres. That is the syringe which contains jalucan jelly like this and there is a nozzle to it. You can also use the same thing. The advantage with this syringe filled with jalucan jelly and nozzle is that you know actually how much you have instilled in. With the jelly tube you are in a Guess, guessing situation but here you know how much you have injected in you can put this in here and squeeze this in okay like this so same thing is okay now after injecting the jelly into urethra keep it occluded keep it straight and you have to wait for nearly three minutes three minutes is the time taken by the jalucan jelly to topically anesthetize the urethral mucosal surface. Some people recommend that with the help of a pad, you should massage the urethra from towards the tip to towards the scrotum in this manner and here also in this manner. But I think this is probably not necessary if you are over jealous with the massaging technique 
you can cause urethral hemorrhage and uh, you can also cause petechial hemorrhages under the mucosa of the urethra these petechial hemorrhages will persist even after the catheterization they can be bleeding by the side of the catheter and these hemorrhagic spots later on give rise to mild urethral burning so i don't think that you should massage the urethra the best is to wait for 3 to 5 minutes in this position next when you have waited for about 3 to 4 minutes this is the catheter this catheter is is supplied in the uh, poly pack which is pre sterilized you have to first open the tip open the tip of the catheter okay open the tip pull expose the only tip that is desired you have to apply some gyrocane jelly to this catheter tip you can open the penis and some jelly will come out of it great you soak this catheter with the jelly and gently you advance it inside the method to insert should be very very gentle as you advance in the sheath can be tear up you can tear apart gently the catheter should be introduced extremely gently in between if you release the pressure from urethra the jelly may come out if jelly does not come out you put your own jelly put jelly to make the catheter well lubricated gently you advance it in if urethra is well lubricated the catheter will actually glide now when you have advanced the catheter up to the bulb of urethra you may sometimes need to bend the penis down like this sometimes and then advance the catheter sometimes you may not need that and you can just go on in the same position go on dance in it the catheter should go in a resistance free manner or you introduce the whole catheter into urethra as you introduce the whole catheter you would see that urine will not come immediately this is because as you were introducing the catheter in the urethra which was filled with gyrocane jelly the jelly goes in into the eye of the catheter jelly goes in into the lumen of the catheter and it occludes it for the time being you have to wait for about a minute sometimes to see the urine flowing out of this catheter if that does not happen you can put gentle suprapubic pressure and see what happens don't be in a hurry to inflate the balloon balloon should never be inflated till the urine comes out of this of this uh, area you must be sure that the catheter has gone in the lumen of the bladder the full proof of this evidence of this is that the urine comes out of the uh catheter okay you let some urine drain in the kidney tray this is a trial tray and you collect this urine for culture sensitivity sample okay aspirate this urine take the urine for culture sensitivity aspirate okay okay now you connect this a euro bag to it this is the euro bag tubing nozzle connect to it you will see that we have not inflated the balloon so far no hurry no hurry connect this thing to it properly <coughs> keep this much catheter in and then inflate the balloon this is a syringe containing 10 ml in adult male patients you can use something like 8 8 ml in females you need to take about 10 15 ml and as you inject this distilled water do it gently and see what's happening if you notice resistance take care otherwise gently inflate the balloon 
a to 10 cc. Once you have inflated the balloon, you pull the catheter out gently and you know now the balloon has targeted the bladder neck. Once this has happened, this is okay in position, remove this got piece. Never forget to bring this prepuce forward into normal position. If you let it be in a retracted position like this and you leave the patient, the skin can remain backwards and can later on swell up to cause paraphimosis. So always put the skin back in normal position. Okay. Take God piece to clean this extra jelly. You should apply some antibiotic cream here. You should apply water soluble cream at the matus. Put this produce back. Now what will happen is after you have done this procedure, whatever jelly that you filled in the urethra will leak out by the side of catheter and will accumulate in the pericatheteric area. So if you apply the cream and put a small gauze piece around this area, this jelly will come and soak this gauze piece only. Otherwise, that jelly will soak the undergarments of the patients. Sometimes the jelly may be mixed with some oozing blood and that leaves an ugly stain. So this protection is a good idea at this point. You must make a note of the amount of urine that has come out in the bag. You must also look at the transparency of urine that is coming out, the turbidity. Sometimes it is dirty and turbid because of infection. Sometimes it is hemorrhagic. So you must make a note of the color of the urine, transparency of urine and the quantity of urine that has come in the uro bag. You will need to stabilize this catheter onto the body of the patient. Uh, often the catheter is anchored to the thigh of the patient. And when you are going to anchor to the thigh, don't fix this catheter shaft to thigh like this. If you fix the catheter to shaft like this and the patient has erection in the morning hours like that, so there will be tension. I hope you can see that. Remove this got piece. If the patient has erection in the morning, there will be certain amount of tension at the meatus in the urethra and this will cause pressure ischemia at the under surface of the meters at 6 o'clock also in the urethra and can later on give rise to pain at the time of erection and later on even the stricture in the urethra. So what if you if at all you have to uh, fix the catheter to thigh don't fix it here fix the fix the uh, tubing of your back to thigh. Stretch. Yes, fix it. Fix it like that. Fix it like this. Now when you fix this tubing or the bag, the catheter is loose and the phallus can move whichever way it wants to. At a time of erection it can go like that. So this extra length of catheter comes handy. You tell the patient that he should keep it in a manner that does not entangle with his clothes. Now better way to fix the catheter is not to fix it to the thigh at all. Better is to not do this and keep the penis like this straight and you can alternatively fix the catheter to the abdominal wall of the patient like this. This is a better way because this maintains the position of penis towards the abdominal wall. If it undergoes some erection in the morning, you have a place to accommodate. The penial curve remains like this. It's not bending downwards all the time when the patient is walking. So the pressure on the urethra is not there and the issue of stricture because of catheter compression will not come up. So we feel that for all patients who are indoor, hospitalized, the penis position this way and a catheter is fixed to abdominal wall is much better.